Welcome back to our tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to look at using Sibelius shortcuts to select different things in a score. Hotkeys for notation are of course very important, but it's almost equally as important that we can quickly select and sort different objects in our score because so much of music notation involves editing, changing or redoing content that's already there. And of course, there are several hotkeys that can be used to do this. Some of the most beautiful selection hotkeys aren't in fact hotkeys at all, but rather hot clicks. As you know, by clicking on a bar we can select all of that bar's content, but what you might not know is that by double clicking a bar we can select an entire instrument starve for that system. And if we triple click on a bar we can select its entire starve for the entire score, and we can also do this for multiple instruments. But this is for the blue selection, which only selects staff content. If we wish to select everything in a passage, even the system objects, bars and staffs themselves, we have to hold down control when clicking a bar. And of course this selection appears in purple. And as before, we can also double click and even triple click on a bar whilst holding control. So moving along, if you hold down shift whilst clicking on various objects, you'll notice that you won't only select just those particular objects that were clicked, but also the area in between those objects as well. But if you instead hold down control whilst clicking on various objects, you'll notice that only the objects themselves will be selected and not the area in between. Another selection tip with the mouse is to simply click and drag whilst holding down shift. And this allows us to select groups of objects or musical passages in a relatively controlled and precise way. So that's it for the mouse, but what can we do with our keyboard? You're probably aware that if you've selected a musical passage, you can expand this selected area one object at a time by holding shift and using the arrow keys. But if you'd like to expand the selected area an entire bar at a time, use the same arrow keys whilst holding down both shift and control together. Now if in the passage you've selected you would then like to select everything, in other words the purple selection, you can do this by pressing shift alt a. And, if you really wish to, you can purple select literally everything in the entire score by pressing Ctrl A. On the other side of the spectrum, if you'd like to be very precise about your staff selection, Ctrl Alt A will take you to a special Select Bars window, which is of course helpful if we already know exactly what selection we require. Now the big question is, well, why is all of this useful? The reason why we need these selection techniques is because once we've selected a passage, we can then select specific objects within that passage. For example, dynamics. Dynamics are the sort of thing that you will often have to align or move, and therefore being able to select all dynamics at once is a great advantage. To do this, and select all of the dynamics in a passage, press Alt Shift D. Another thing that you will often wish to select are individual voices from within a single staff. This is of course useful if you ever wish to separate them into different systems or change them in some way. To select an individual voice we press Ctrl Shift Alt and the voice number we require from 1 to 4. We can also select different notes from within a chord by pressing Ctrl Alt 1 for the top note, Ctrl Alt 2 for the second note, Ctrl Alt 3 for the third note, and Ctrl Alt Shift B for the bottom note. Now there's also a selection hotkey that allows us to select all of the text from a system that belongs to our selected text type. 
this hotkey is Control shift a and it works for techniques, expression marks, chord symbols, lyrics, and so on. And this is particularly helpful because you will often have to format, align, or edit one specific text type in multiple instances. So the next thing I would like to show you isn't actually a hotkey, but rather a very, very helpful menu, and that is the filters menu which can be found in the home ribbon. With the aid of this menu we can filter out all sorts of objects, text or notes from a selected passage. Using this menu I could, for example, just filter out and select the rests from my passage. Now I can't even begin to describe how useful this menu actually is, but the best part is that you can create your own hotkeys for each one of these filters. But I'm not going to go into that for now, because we'll be covering customizing hotkeys in the not too distant future. Another useful selecting tool is the tab key. Pressing tab will take you not only to the next note in a system, but to the next object. And by holding down shift whilst pressing tab, you can go back the other way. And being able to tab to the next or previous object will help prevent us from switching back and forth between our keyboard and the mouse. Now the last selection hotkey for this lesson is control and arrow left or right. So by holding down control and using the arrows, you can jump to the first note of either the next or previous bar. And this can be a nice way of moving around quickly, and likewise will prevent us from touching our mouse too often. So, now that I've bombarded you with information, a quick disclaimer. I don't necessarily expect you to become proficient with all of the hotkeys that I've listed in this lesson. A couple of these hotkeys I myself almost never use, whilst others I use literally all of the time. And it's going to be up to you to decide which features and which hotkeys here are the most useful to the type of work you do and the way in which you work, but I would at least suggest becoming fluent with some of these hotkeys. The filtering hotkeys in particular can be very useful, especially when working on larger scale projects. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at hotkey tricks for layout.